So another one of these important current patterns is the Ekman transport system. And when we talked about the uh, water uh, chapter, we talked about how life depends on this system to, for, because of upwelling. And we're going to talk about how this actually circulates the nutrients and the temperature of the ocean water and, and has a lot of effects for us. Now, remember that um, this is all have to do with the way the wind pushes the water. It is the surface layer of water that's actually displaced by these winds. And so surface currents only affect the first top layer of the water. However, if you are displacing that top layer, in other words, you're making that top layer move, you're going to have two things happening. First, it's, you're going to cause that layer that's behind it to move to replace that, but also some of the water that's in the bottom is going to have to rise to replace the water that's being moved away. And so whenever the wind pushes the surface water away, water from the bottom is forced to rise to replace the water that's moving away. Right? So that's the idea between behind the Ackerman transport system. Now, um, in other words, um, now the other thing that happens at the same time is that the Coriolis effect actually causes the wind to, to, to shift in the direction that, that it's actually pushing the water. In other words, remember that Coriolis effect, because of the, the inertial force of the water, of the Earth spinning, it actually causes bulges in the surface of the water that creates a geotroph geostrophic current that's actually um, going in a different direction from the direction that the current's actually trying to go. So in other words, uh, for all the currents trying to head south from the northern hemisphere, they actually shift towards the right, in their perspective, uh, and go towards the west. Uh, while the currents which are coming from the south, going straight up, if, in their perspective, they're actually shifting towards the left. And so you get this clockwise motion in the, in the, in the northern hemisphere and this counterclockwise motion in the southern hemisphere. So the idea is that in the southern hemisphere, winds are shifted towards the left, and in the northern hemisphere, winds are shifted towards the right, which is what creates the jibis on opposite directions. Now, put the... To actually understand the Ackman transport system, you have to put the Coriolis effect together with the idea that the wind only pushes the surface water. Let's talk about it now. So, when the wind tries to push the surface water away, it actually causes the water not to move in the same direction as the wind is pushing, but because of the Coriolis effect, it actually the surface water actually moves at an angle to the actual direction of the wind. Uh, typically a 45 degree angle to the direction of the wind, depending on how strong the winds are. But you're going to have this Coriolis force causing the geostrophic current effect and shifting the winds either to the left or to the right depending on your hemisphere. The picture you see here in the top left, it will be a northern hemisphere picture. The southern hemisphere picture will look slightly different with the, with the or exactly the opposite with the uh, surface water moving that way. Now, what's going to happen when the surface water moves away is that now the water that was here is has to is going away from there which means the water in the bottom has to rise to replace that water and then it's going to create motion on the bottom layer as well but because the bottom layer is deeper it's less affected by the wind which means it's going to move less and therefore refract less so the angle for the bottom layer is not the same angle for the top layer and so that means that the, the bottom angle is going to move in a different direction. Now, since it's moving, the layer below that also has to replace the layer uh, uh, right above it. And so it's going to move as well. But since it's affected less by the wind, it's also going to be fret less. And so it's going to move in a different direction and so forth. And so as you go deeper and deeper into the ocean, you have less and less motion, but in a different and different direction. And the overall result is that you get this ever-turning, uh, spiraling, rising column of water that's going towards the surface both because of the fact that it is turning or be, be, and because of the water has to rise to replace the water that's moving from each each layer above it and why is it turning because the wind Coriolis effect is causing uh, the the water to move in a slightly different direction from the direction the wind is actually pushing it but that because of the geostrophic current effect of the bulging of the water but this but at the same time the the, uh, the surface is being affected more than the layer below or the layer below or the layer below. And so what you're going to end up getting is a spiraling case of different directions of water motion. Now, if you were to put all of those different directions together, the overall net movement for a, an infinite pile of this, obviously you're never going to gather the, that in the ocean. Uh, the, the ocean is not infinitely low, but theoretically, mathematically, if you have an infinitely de deep spiral like this, the net movement of water will be at about a 9 degree angle with the direction of the wind. Which means in the southern hemisphere, if, you're if a wind is moving this way, 
it would actually be pushed to the left. Uh, the water will be pushed to the left of the wind. And if the wind is put me not the southern hemisphere, if the wind is moving this way, the water actually will move to the right of that. Or in other words, I know it seems like I'm pointing left here in the screen, but that's because the perspective is changing, right? So either way, that's actually what creates the Ekman transport. Now, the what the Ekman transport will do then is uh, near the continent. See here, in North America, where the wind is blowing that way, all right. So it's moving north, but remember in the northern hemisphere, it moves to the right of the wind. So that means the water will move away from the continent in the North, in, in the north American eastern seaboard, which will look something like this, as you can see here. All right? It will move away from the continent. It will look something like this. So the wind will be blowing towards the north, and then the, that means at a 90 degree angle, you're going to have a net water movement. Remember, down here, you have a spiral of water rising. And you get, you're going to get that throughout the entire thing. You're going to have this spiral of water rising. And your overall net effect is that the water is moving that way, upwelling uh, the water. Now, that's all of that is happening because to replace the water, that's actually being displaced to the left of the wind because of what we just described. All right? So as the water has to move up, the bottom water has to circle up and move up, just like we said. Now what that does is it picks up cold, nutrient-rich, carbon dioxide-rich water from the bottom of the ocean and takes that water to the top where the actual algae will use those nutrients and the carbon dioxide to perform photosynthesis. And so that's actually very important for the oceanic, oceanic system. And remember though that in the, the opposite will happen in some place like California where, where if the wind, all right, so like, so if the wind is moving in a direction that's in other words, if the continent, uh, if the wind is moving north here, all right, uh, any continent, wherever the wind is moving north like this, and the it's a northern hemisphere, again, that's going to go in a 9 degree angle to the direction of the wind, so you're going to get water moving towards the continent, and that way you're going to have exactly the opposite. You're going to have water sinking uh, or being pushed away or, a, or a convergence zone. Now, this will actually happen also on the open ocean, because if you have an area where where two winds are, are going past each other, for example, right here on the equator, where the winds are actually converging, right, and you're going to have the northern hemisphere, the winds is going to be moving, uh, the, the water is going to actually be moving. Let me make the water in blue. The water is actually going to be moving to the right of the wind, but in the southern hemisphere, the water is going to be moving to the left of the wind. So what is going to happen is that you're going to end up getting the surface wind moving the water away from that central location. And what you're going to have happen is that the cold water is going to rise to the top because of that, displacing the, the surface water that's moving away from that center. So that means that the cold water rises to replace that, which is important because that's how the Antarctic bottom water and the Antarctic bottom water, which are coming with nutrient-rich carbon dioxide water, actually rises to the top to meet the equatorial waters where algae will perform even more photosynthesis and ox oxygenate that water that's so carbon dioxide rich. So the, the equatorial uh, uh, region also sees uh, the effect like that. Sa similarly, if you have, say, for example, a, a, a cyclone which is pushing the water away from a region, you're going to have this upwelling effect, all right? So you're going to have this upwelling effect here as well. But on the other hand, an anticyclone later on, if you have an upwelling zone here, that means that water is going to eventually collide with another one, and you're going to have downwelling happen here. So you have this circulating pattern of the ocean water where the, you have one upwelling zone and then and another upwelling zone, and in the middle, you're going to have a convergence zone when you have a downwelling zone. So what you end up getting is this ever-circulating pattern which is going to be recycling the nutrients in the bottom of the water. And that's the beauty of this. And this will also happen in the continents, depending on the direction the wind is going. Remember, if the wind is in the northern hemisphere, it's moving parallel to the continent. In the northern direction, you're going to get downwelling. But if it's moving parallel to the continent in the northern direction, um, that way, you're actually going to get the opposite in the, in the northern hemisphere, right? Because it always moves to the, to the right of the wind. Uh, but... So that, this will be exactly the opposite on the southern hemisphere will move to the, to the left of the wind. Now the importance of either the open water or the continental downwelling and upwelling effects is that you're actually going to move 
deep cools water nutrient rich to the surface which cools down the surface and provides it with the nutrients which gather at the bottom of the ocean as animals die and are decomposed at the bottom so this actually helps recycle both the temperature and the, the nutrient nutrients of the ocean it's a very important current pattern that allows life in the water to exist and remember that up if you have upwelling happening here somewhere down here you're going to have downwelling or convergence zone just like it happens in the open water all right so that's it guys and um now in the next video we're going to talk about um we're going to start talking about waves so see you guys then